Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God, our Father, and Christ Jesus, our Lord. Amen. Of all the holidays during the calendar year, both secular and religious, I would describe Christmas as a high-effort holiday. We have lots of low-effort holidays, like Memorial Day or Labor Day. How much effort do those holidays really require? Hardly any. In fact, you celebrate those holidays by putting forth no effort. You have the day off. You're not working. You're just eating, maybe a, going to a barbecue or putting some burgers on the grill, right? Then we have those middle effort holidays, like the 4th of July. There's some decorating. Maybe you put out a flag. Maybe you go to the parade or take your kids to see the fireworks. It's a medium effort holiday. But then there's Christmas. Christmas is a high effort holiday. It requires the most decorations, the most shopping, the most gift exchanging. There's the food, the Christmas programs, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. It is a high effort holiday. But Christmas isn't all about the decorations and the gifts. I think most people know that. Most people know that Christmas is about something deeper, something bigger, something more meaningful than a bobblehead sitting under a plastic Christmas tree. But what's it all about? You hear the same thing each year. It's about family. It's about sharing and giving love to one another. It's about charity and giving. And you and I both know that there's something a little bit wrong with this kind of thinking. You see, those are year-round type things. To love your family, to be kind and charitable and generous to each other, that's not just for Christmas. That's something we do all year Wrong. So there must be something more. Christmas is that one time of year when people make an extra effort to find real meaning, to find real joy in their lives. This is when many people make an effort to even look into the heart of God. Maybe this is the year they might think when I will be able to finally see God, finally understand God, and find real joy and meaning in my life. Maybe this is the year when I will be able to get a glimpse of who God really is and how that affects my life. Consciously or subconsciously, most people at this time of the year are trying to catch a glimpse of God. Imagine, imagine the world at the time Jesus was born. Imagine what Mary saw. The world was a very busy place. At this particular time, most people were traveling to their hometowns to register to be taxed by Caesar. Mary just happened to be one of those people. So much hustle and bustle, everyone was busy. There's so many travelers that Mary and Joseph have to spend the night in a stable. And there Mary gives birth to Jesus. But no one really notices. No one really cares. It's not that people are uninterested in God. It's just that most people, to most people at that time, a poor couple in a stable having a baby has nothing to do with God. The world hasn't changed much, has it? It's still a hustle and bustle place. Everyone is busy. Does that mean that people aren't interested in God? Oh, no. No, matter of fact, no matter how busy we get, deep down there's still a desire to look into the heart of God. That's why there are so many religions today. People are speculating, trying to guess what's in the heart of God. 
There's a growing interest in spirituality, trying to guess what's at the heart of God. There's a growing interest in spirituality, millions and millions of books published each year. Some of them might even be under the Christmas tree this year. No matter how busy we are, we long to be touched by an angel and to look into the heart of God. But for most, the search is unsuccessful. That spiritual book is interesting, but not the answer. That latest religion was okay at first, but confusing after a while. The shows on TV are nice and heartwarming, but I still haven't caught a glimpse of who God is. Many people leave the holidays a little down, a little disappointed, and they, and they don't know why. Perhaps, perhaps it's because they were looking for God, but never found him in the places they were looking. This evening, I invite you to walk into the stable and to stand next to Mary and to see what she sees. What does Mary see? Mary sees a baby, but more than a baby, Mary remembers the promises that God made about this child. And as she recalls those promises and stares into the face of that little one, she realizes that she's gazing into the heart and soul of God. And the shepherds arrive. And they tell her what the angels had said to them. They crowd around the manger and gaze into the face of this precious child. And as they do, they realize that they are gazing into the heart and soul of God. And the shepherds leave. And Mary ponders all these things in her heart. Everything her world needs is right here. Everything that her hustling and bustling neighbors need is right here, laying in this manger. The key to understanding God, the key to understanding the meaning of life, the key to everything is right here in this manger. And Mary lifts this little baby out of the manger and she gives him to you. And there you stand, perhaps awkwardly holding the Son of God in your arms. And you look down into his face and you realize that you're looking into the heart of God. In your arms you have what everyone in America, indeed what everyone in the world is looking for. While the rest of the world hustles and bustles, running from one spiritual guru to the next, channel surfing from one Christmas special to the next, while the rest of the world reads spiritual book after spiritual book and sings about chestnuts and snowflakes, looking for meaning and joy in God. There you are, in the quiet of the night, away from the hustle, away from the bustle, looking into the face of this child, looking into the heart of God himself. Why? Why would God do this, you ask? Why would the ruler of the universe squeeze himself into a seven pound, six ounce baby? Why? It doesn't make any sense. But then you look outside the stable and you notice a shadow. It's a bright night, the stars are out, one star seems to be shining especially bright and you see a shadow, a shadow of the cross. And then you understand. You understand that someday God would sink even lower than tonight. Tonight God sinks into human flesh, but someday God would sink even lower, suffering and dying on a cross. 
And you cannot help but feel a little bit sad for this little child, knowing how much he would have to suffer. But at the same time, you can't help but also feel glad. Because you know that after this child dies on the cross, he rises from the dead. You realize that the baby you are holding would someday set the world free from sin. And you cannot help but smile because you know that it's because of this baby that all of your mistakes have been taken away. It's because of this baby that God loves you and offers to you everlasting life. And so you give the baby back to Mary. But before you walk away from this table, you take one last look. You take one last look and you see God's love for you, his mercy, his forgiveness, his wisdom. This evening, God has touched you with something even better than an angel, and you rejoice because you know that God is not a God who is far away, but a God who is very near. You don't have to drift and wander down endless paths looking for God, looking for meaning in your life. God has come looking for you. And he has found you in the stable. As you walk away from the stable this evening, I invite you to ponder these things in your heart. Enjoy the holidays. Enjoy the hustle and bustle. And do you know why you can enjoy that? because you know that you don't have to find deep meaning in all these things. The gifts, the gatherings, they are simply blessings that God has given each one of us to enjoy. And so we can enjoy these things. But we can also rejoice, because apart from these things, we have found God. And so we have found meaning and purpose and joy. We have held the baby Jesus in our arms this evening. We have looked into the face of Christ and we have seen the heart of God. In Christ Jesus, amen.